Hi, my name is Maren Fitzmaurice. I'm delighted to be here today with you on your conference. Um, I have a business called digitalpractice.ie and I'm here to talk to you today about how to use marketing to drive your business. So there's a couple of areas that we're going to look at um, to help you do that. So first we're going to look at marketing strategy and the structure of a marketing plan so you can understand really what it is that you need to consider when marketing your practice. We're going to look at how do you choose the right tool for your business, how do you build a compelling message, and also the supports that are out there for your business. So why am I here talking to you uh, today? So um, I have a business for over nine years now, um, marketingcoach.ie, and I also run the business digitalpractice.ie, which specializes in helping um, practitioners um, and professionals understand how to market their businesses more effectively. Um, I'm known as an expert in marketing strategy, so I've won multiple uh, different awards. Um, I work with the likes of New Frontiers and the local enterprise office on helping their business owners figure out what marketing to do for their businesses. Um, I'm also a lecturer in the Smurfit Business School. The area that I wanted to draw your attention to is this, um, where over the last 10 years, I've actually trained over 10,000 business owners. And as part of a QQI qualification process, I've evaluated over 600 business plans. So that gives me unique access to the inside belly of a business and I'm really able to understand then what is it that people are doing right and wrong when they're writing those marketing plans for their business and I'm going to try and steer you in the right direction so you don't make any of those mistakes. So what do we do with digital practice? There is uh, three core areas that we really help people around. So it's marketing strategy. So figuring out the right strategy for each business. We look at social media. So how to use social media effectively for your practice. And we also do web design. So designing really brilliant websites that sell your practice um, in the best way possible. And the ultimate goal is all about growth. And um, so it's um, getting more customers and getting more profit profitability in the business. So the first thing we'll look at is marketing strategy and structure. So what's included in the marketing plan? So um, over the years, I've worked with loads of different types of companies. So my background comes from big business and um, working with likes of Unilever, Cantrell and Cochrane, Intel, um, and then working with smaller businesses. Um, and I mentioned earlier on that we specialize in uh, professions. So what, some of the work that we do, and you can see there's a lot of names here of physiotherapists and um, a veterinary practice. Um, so we really have people that have a business that they just happen to have a business but they specialize in the area of their skill, whether that's the law, um, for example, for you guys, or it's physiotherapy. They happen to have a practice, um, but it's physiotherapist is their, their main uh, driver. And we look at how do we make sure that as a business owner, you're doing the right things for your business and that you're doing that in an effective way and um, that it gets you more customers but also in an efficient way so that you're not spending too much time on marketing because you really want to be working on the things uh, that you are you have your expertise around. So I did a piece of research last year of 100 business owners and asked them about um, how they planned their marketing, right? Um, and the results were really interesting because only 9% had a clear written down plan of what they were going to do to market their business. 49% of those 100 businesses that were surveyed had a rough plan or do it on the fly. So they had a, a, an idea in their mind of what they wanted to do, um, but they made a lot of decisions um, just on the fly as they were going uh, throughout their day to day. 34% of the businesses did not have a plan, but would like one. And then with the rebels in the group, which were 9% did not have a plan and didn't want one, didn't feel the need for it. Okay. So I found this uh, really interesting. Um, because a plan is a really useful tool like just writing down what is your what are the actions that you're going to take to get more customers that in itself is a really useful thing for you to do so my first tip for you for your business if you want to grow grow your legal practice is write down how you plan to do that so i know it sounds really simple but you can see from the results that we did last year and i've done it a number of times is that this uh, these kind of statistics hold true is that most people don't write it down. So it's a gift you can give yourself for 2020. What is it that you're actually going to do to grow the business? What I found really interesting as part of that was that despite that only 9% uh, wrote it down, 78% spend money on marketing um, and 69% don't have an assigned budget. 
So if only 9% of a clear plan, yet 78% of businesses are spending money and 69% don't have an assigned budget, that does not make sense, right? So just sitting down and asking yourself, like, how much am I going to spend next year? Because what you can find is that you end up spending a lot of money because you make decisions on the fly, that when you get to the end of the year and you do your annual accounts, you're like, God, I can't believe that I actually spent two grand on marketing. Like, what were we doing that we spent two grand or five grand or 10 grand, whatever it is that you're spending? So planning in advance what it is I'm going to spend will automatically make you smarter about when someone comes to you and says, oh, look, do you want to do an advertisement in the local paper? Or, you know, whatever it might be that you're like, well, I'm spending two grand. That's 500. Mm, I'm not going to spend that um, on what you're proposing that you want me to do with you. So it makes you a, a lot smarter. Um, in your decision making process around marketing so review plan and that leads to success so that's the first tip that i would uh, i would give you so i always like to think of it as like professionals have plans so like you wouldn't go into a case and not have an agenda or a written out plan of like this is how we're going to attack this case right so professionals always have plans so if you go for a heart surgery you expect them to have a plan of what the procedure is. Like you would assume that they would have it written down in some uh, in some format. They would say these are the steps that we're going to take to do your heart surgery. If you get on an airplane and uh, the pilot um, is is going to San Francisco or wherever it is that they're going, you would know that they have a flight plan, right? So professionals have plans, and the A team even <laughs> have a plan. So. This is the key recommendation that I have for you. Write it down. Okay, so the next bit that we'll talk about is what is it that you're writing down? So this is all about choosing the right tool for your business. So what is the process? What is the structure to make that happen? So um, what's really interesting when I talk to business owners is that ideas really aren't the problem, right? So most people have loads of different ideas as you're going through your life, through your business life. You're thinking, oh, we could do this for the practice. We could do this. But actually, we don't have any structure in which to place that. So I'm going to show you a really simple structure that you can use uh, to frame your marketing ideas. So if you can imagine this is like a one page marketing plan for yourself. And these are the three elements that you would write on that with the one page. So the first uh, part of it at the top of your page will be who is it that we are looking to target? So who is it that we're trying to get on board um, for our business? How are we planning to grow it? The second thing then you ask yourself, which is a follow up question is in the, the second part of your page is where are they? So what tools are they using that I will be able to use to communicate to them? And I'll give you some practical examples of that in a minute. And then the third part is, how am I going to use those tools? So how am I going to convince them to buy off me rather than, you know, another uh, solicitor or another, um, another organization? So how will I convince them to buy? So if we take the, uh, the first part, which is that who, the customers, let's take a look and see, like what, is, like, what kind of customers are you looking to get into your practice? So I've just taken an example of uh, two uh, different practices so Wendy Doyle um, is based over in uh, Wicklow um, and the one on the right was from Boland's um, down in Kilkenny so I just took these from their websites and um, but it kind of gives you an illustration of the type of um, services that are being offered out so you know the details from employment uh, laws business law legal advice personal injury family law this is really typical from what you would see on um, most uh, websites for legal um, legal firms. So it's kind of like an expression of everything you can do, okay? And it's good to have it on your, on your website. But when you're writing a marketing plan, what you're actually deciding is out of all of these things that I do as a, as a practice owner, which are the ones that I want to spend my time and money on getting more of those customers through the door? So for example, if you look at Boland's, um, it could be that they decide, okay, do you know what? We really want to go after the personal injury side of the business um, and family law. Or it could be that we really want to go after wills and probate and intellectual property. So why are you doing that? So marketing is all about two elements, okay? It's all about that you only have so much time and money 
to spend on marketing. So you're making a decision about who is it that I want to get into my business and you're going after them in a very specific way. Um, so the key differentiator with this, because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not sure about target niche. Like everybody can be my customer once they have these issues, right? And that's fine. Everybody can be your customer. So if everybody comes to your website and they see all those different services that are aligned, that's great that they can make their choice. That's lovely. But marketing and you as a, as a business owner is you deciding who do you want more of? Which ones of those are the businesses that or the customers that you like working with the most? that make you the most money, you want to get more of them on board. Okay, so in my context, for example, as a marketing uh, consultant, um, there's loads of different people that I could do business with. So startups was one of the ones that was mentioned there. Startups love working with me as a marketeer, right? But they're not very profitable for me because they don't have much money. So small uh, to medium-sized enterprises are much more interesting for me as a business owner um, because they have more money in their pocket. So on my website, I will have that I serve all of those people. But in my marketing actions, in the things that I'm going to do, I'm not targeting the small businesses because they don't they don't bring enough revenue through the door. So that's what you're doing. And that is the first decision that you make to make a really effective marketing plan. Who do I want to get more of into my business? So once you've made that decision, then the marketing follows on from that. OK, so the second question then is the where are they? Right. So you're asking yourself, who is that ideal customer? Oh, sorry. This is what I meant to mention. Um, how you decide on who your uh, ideal customer is through these four methodologies. OK, so the first one you're asking yourself is who needs or wants my services the most? Because that's easier to sell to them. Right. So who needs or wants it the most? Where do I make most money? Who is the easiest for me to get to? And who do I want to work with the most? So the passion part. So that's a way that you can choose which of the target audiences that you're going to go for for your business. So once you have a target audience, then you're asking yourself, where are they? OK, so what are the media that they're consuming that I'd be able to use to reach them? So this is like a prompt list for you. So this is a really useful um, slide. So you're asking yourself, what are they reading? So what magazines are they reading? What press are they reading? What social media are they engaged in? What networks are they part of? What websites do they go to for information? Is there a place where they gather? So is there locations that they tend to come together? So if you think of like, um, if you're trying to target uh, the multinationals, they're more likely to be in like City West, the IFSC, um, down by Google and Facebook around that area in uh, the Dublin city centre. So is there locations that um, are important for the target audience that I'm going after? What are they listening to? So radio, podcasts, what events are they going to? So where do they gather, essentially? What are the groups, clubs, or organizations that they're part of? What are the forums that they're engaged in? So this is like their conversation, where they have their conversation. And then who influences them? So who, like, and I I mean, I don't mean necessarily influencers from the social media side, which it could be, um, but it's also influencers as who is uh, influencing them on their decision-making process. Um, so say, for example, when I used to work for Flora Proactive, and we were selling to consumers about this um, product that helps with cholesterol. We were obviously selling to people that were over 55. So we were doing that through our media, but we knew that healthcare professionals were really influential in them making their decision. So when someone went to the doctor and found out that they had high cholesterol, as an example, well, then they would automatically ask the healthcare professional, oh, what should I do to resolve this? And we wanted healthcare professionals to think a oh, floral proactive is one of the solutions for them. So that would be an example of an influencer or an opinion leader for your particular target audience. So you write that down, you write down where, like, what are the tools that I could use that make sense for my for my customer? So I'm going to give you um, some examples of that that um, are relevant for uh, for legal firms. So 
if we look at, say, I decide I'm going to go after uh, wills and probate and it's in the local area. OK, so I want to be known. I live in Greystones, right? So um, if I had a practice in Greystones, I want to be known in the Wicklow area, the North Wicklow area, for being brilliant at uh, doing wills and probate. Okay, so some of the thing, the tools that I might use would be the likes of local radio, local press. Might consider doing direct mail to housing estates. Um, I might look at Facebook because um, Facebook would be quite heavy usage in the over thirties, and um, so I might go for that. Or I might sponsor local teams to get my name out there in the local area. Okay, so that might be things that I do on a local basis. However, if I decide, um, which like, this will happen for many of you because you have different skill sets within your uh, practice, wills and probate is one, but there might be uh, another part of the business that you want to promote. So say business law, for example, is the other one that I really want to go after. Business people and local people, while they might do many of the same things, they actually also behave differently. So if I was really going to go after and try and get more businesses through the door, because I really want to do more um, more of that type of legal work, well, then I would look at doing like the listening part. I might do local radio, but that doesn't really make sense. I might uh, be more likely to do like try and get a guest spot on a business podcast. Or instead of local press, I would be going for like the likes of the Business Plus magazine or Better Business from the SFA. I'd be looking to get featured in those type of magazines as opposed to local press because that doesn't make as much sense for, um, for, for this target audience. I might look at uh, trying to get business awards because that would build my profile within the business community. I'd be more likely to use the likes of LinkedIn rather than Facebook. Um, and the networks that I, I would join would be the likes of BNI, the Chamber, the Small Firm Association, ISME, whoever else it might be, because I want to connect with that community. So there may be some crossover, but you can see what ends up happening is that when you actually make a decision about who you want more of, you can make much better marketing decisions because the truth of it is, is that everybody is everywhere. OK, so if you stay at the level of I want to promote our practice to everybody, that means you have to go everywhere. That's all of press, all radio all magazines, all social media, and your message becomes less clear because you're trying to tell everybody about everything. So if you think like for most consumers, we hear over 3000 messages every day. So unless it calls out to me as an individual, I'm probably not going to pay attention to that message. OK, so unless you say that it's, you know, it's for entrepreneurs who are working in the professional sector straight away. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's that's who I am. What, what are they going to say next? I'll help you save money, save time, whatever it might be. I'm more interested in that because it's speaking to me directly. So you make it much more compelling message when you have a clear target audience. So there will always, what I find is that people know that it makes sense that you make a decision about who you want more of. So they're like, yes, tick. that totally makes sense. And then you say, okay, pick that target audience and then you'll be able to make a better decision on how to reach them. And they're like, yes, tick. And then you say, okay, and it makes a better message, right? Because you can talk more directly to the needs of the, the customer. And they're like, yes, tick. But there's something that always happens for people when they actually go to do the plan. They're like, yeah, but I want to get everybody like I don't really want to concentrate just on, on those because I feel like I'm missing out. So I call it like the ultimate marketing FOMO. Right. So it's you will feel that where you start going down this road and you're like, that makes sense. I, I understood what Marion was saying. Totally makes sense. And then you'll pull back because you have a fear of missing out. So. Don't go with that feeling, which is what I'd say to you. Do not go with that feeling. Um, it's like what I, I like to compare it to horse racing. Okay, so if you go to a horse race, a horse racing um, event, which hopefully we'll get back to going, going to soon, um, and if on the last race, and you're trying to make sure that you win, right, and on the last race you would decide to bet on all of the horses, the person beside you would say, you're not going to win any money on that. Like if you have 100 euro and you're going to spend, you know, 10 euro on the 10 horses that are in the race, you're not going to win big. So you will win something. So you will get some traction back, but you're not going to win big. So what do you do? You pick the two or three horses that you think are most likely to win and you put your money on those. 
you may lose, which is fine, but you have a much better chance of winning properly um, when you do it in that approach. And that is basically the essence of why you're picking a target audience, because everybody, you're spreading your money too thin, you don't have enough resources, it's a bit diluted, the message, all of that kind of stuff, all right? So step three then brings you into this compelling message. So the key thing is to actually pick that target audience because you can make your message more compelling once you do that. Um, so one of the core areas that you can sell that message uh, through is on your, um, on your website particularly now because more people are going online than necessarily physically going um, to visit people. Um, so this is a, a business that we worked with um, last year and they came to us, Bailey Point Physio, um, are based over in Galway. And uh, Michael Gallagher, who is the lead in that the business, is a physiotherapist. He is an expert at um, treating people. So he's quite renowned in the West for um, being an expert in particularly vertigo um, and treating vertigo and orthotics, right? Um, this is his website. He's a really good team. But it doesn't represent him well, right? You can see here, it doesn't look great. Um, and one of the challenges with this is that um, the message here is not a message of prestige. It's a, not a message of expertise um, in the way that this web website is designed. Um, and it do, doesn't really uh, showcase the, the practice in the best way possible. So this was their like team page. And you can see like, you know, the pictures aren't even that good, right? So this decision about how am I going to tell my story is, is really important because we're telling that story through for the like, for example, the likes of a website. So some of the things that we did, we redesigned uh, the website but we just gave it a really simple, straightforward message. So we are the leading physiotherapy and sports injury practice with over 20 years experience serving Connacht, supported by a team of expert physiotherapists. So straight away, getting in that message about who is it that we are serving? We're serving people with sports injury. So if you go down to all of the services that they have, they have loads of services, right? They have oodles of them. So from back pain to vertigo to all of the different ones, but they decided this is really where they wanted to position themselves with sports injury and musculoskeletal um, services. We made sure that we got photographs retaken of them, right? Um, so that they started looking really good. But not only just did we say that they're here, we also started showcasing them and their expertise. So you can see that we broke it um, out here where we told um, the story of the vision, the mission, the values, the promise um, through the website, but also then each of the specialities of the particular um, physiotherapist that they were going for. Um, the reason I have the pricing here was an interesting one because they didn't feel that they could raise the pricing um, previous to this, particularly with the website, because people were booking through through the website. Um, less of an issue um, in terms of booking because, you know, going to the legal firm um, is, you know, it's not an impulse purchase, right? Um, but one of the things that um, we noticed was that the, as an organization, they felt more confident about charging more because they felt that the portrayal of their image was more professional, was higher value. And this is one of the things that when you're looking at your website or your premises or any of your marketing material, it's often worth investing in the look and feel of them because it tells a story. It makes it more compelling on why people should choose to do business with you. So one tip that I would give you is, have you done a Google search of yourself recently? Um, and just go through that journey with your uh, customer and ask yourself, okay, from the time that they Google search me, so from the time that they go on Google, then they go onto my website and then they ring me and they uh, talk to the receptionist. And then the next point of contact that they have with me and trace all of the points of contact that you have with your customer and ask yourself, how do I improve that? So how do I make the experience really good for my customer? And ask yourself, what are the messages that I want them leaving with? And when you do that, thinking through every customer uh, contact point that you have, that's where you start making really good marketing decisions. And you become an organization that automatically is thinking about how do I market this effectively in every point of contact that I have with my particular customer? 
Step four, the last uh, piece was around what supports are out there for your business. So I thought this might be useful for you to know about some of the other supports. So there is a really uh, good fund that's out there at the moment called the Trading Online Voucher. So some of you may or may not be aware of it. So your local enterprise offices are a really good source of training and upskilling. So they do a whole load of training courses online. They also do mentoring, but they also do funding. And the Trading Online Voucher is a really good uh, funding option for any uh, practice owner. So it is um, funding to uh, 2,750 euro for the um, development or redevelopment of your website to make it uh, more um, e-commerce friendly. It's 90% funding of that 2,750. So you only pay 10% of that. Um, and you get a website. So you're talking a couple of hundred quid and you have a website pretty much for um, for, for very little. Um, so that I would really recommend that you check that out. The local enterprise offices are all across the country. So um, they're in every county. So if you just look up your local enterprise office, so it'd be local enterprise office Wicklow, local enterprise office Dublin South, Dublin North, um, or local enterprise office Kilkenny, wherever it might be, um, and look up the training online voucher. It's really worth going after um, because it's it's really highly funded. It used to be 50% um, funding. It's now 90%. Um, so try and avail of it um, as soon as you can um, so that it doesn't go back down to 50% because you don't get as much value for that. Um, the other uh, supports that I thought would be interesting for you was in terms of social media, um, one of the core questions that people always ask us is around um, how do I make my posts look more professional? Um, there's a tool called Canva, which is an editing tool, which can really help you with that. So I'd recommend you take that uh, a look at that. The other question that we often get asked is, I want to use pictures and I'm afraid of copyright. You know, it would be one that you all would be uh, it would be more familiar with. Um, but Pixabay and Pexels are two websites that give free use of really good imagery. Um, and I thought they would be useful for you. So when you're creating your content, whether for your website or for your social media or whatever it might be, um, they're really good sort of for your brochures. They're really good sources of free um, free photography. So as a takeaway, there is um, a thing that I call the power of three. So we all know the importance of um, three. So like if you look at any of the politicians, they'll always do like, these are three steps to success or whatever it might be. But three works really well in our minds, right? Because we can remember and it, there's a power in like, these are the three things that I'm going to do this year um, to you know grow my business. So what I'd recommend that you do is at the end of this session, Take a moment and ask yourself these two things. What are three things that I'm going to do to get my existing customers to buy more or to refer more? That is one really strong way of getting more business through the door. So what are three ways that I could get my current customers, my existing customers to either buy more from me or refer me more? And then the second question is, what are the three things that I can do this year to get me more customers through the door? So I'd invite you to just take a minute now to write what are the key takeaways that you have from this um, session so that it makes it more action oriented rather than just um, listening to something and then moving on. Um, so what are, the, what are the key takeaways that you're gonna um, that you're going to act from as a result of this this session and i always think if it's even just one thing that you take away it's always been worth uh, worth the time then um so there is some uh, things that we can do that can help you um help you along so if marketing is something that you really do want to take seriously for your practice and you want to invest a bit of time um into understanding okay what is it that i can do to really grow my practice over the um in 2020 well then we can certainly help you with digital practice so we do business coaching we do a uh, development of marketing strategy for business owners. So we've done that. Um, we just recently finished one for a legal firm up in Louth. Um, so 
please contact us if you want help on that. We also develop really beautiful websites um, for businesses and we help people with their social media. So if you're struggling with your social media, reach out and uh, contact us. We'd be more than happy to um, help you. My colleague, Carl, is going to be talking to you more about digital marketing and exploring that area. So I hope you really enjoy his session um, as well. So thank you very much. And um, it's been uh, really good to, um, to talk to you today. So thank you.